Solutions will help realize application-centric networks and realize the path to near-term edge use cases. On this executive broadcast, leaders in the 5G, ORAN, and Telco Edge Cloud sectors will illustrate proven edge infrastructures and near and long-term use cases. Starting the panel is Juan Carlos Garcia, Z Senior Vice President of Technology and Ecosystems at Telefonica. Next is Christina Rodriguez. She's Vice President and GM of the Data Center Group and the Wireless Access Network Division, that at Intel. Next is Shamik Mishra. He's Vice President and Global Industry Chief Architect at Altran. And next in line is Saad Sheikh. He's Chief Architect of Networking Cloud Orchestration Edge and 5G of the Saudi Telecom Company. And finally, on the end, in the lower right, we have Roy Chua. He's founder of AvidThink. And everyone, uh, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. Christine, I'm going to start with you. Let's sort of set the stage. The growth of 5G wireless technologies are necessitating approaches that include edge computing architectures. What is the real correlation between edge cloud and ORAN developments leading uh, to converged network designs and robust 5G networks? Great, great question Abe, to start uh, with. With 5G, we're gonna see more compute push out to the edge, to the locations where uh, are more suitable, more capable to deal with uh, the latency, the bandwidth, the security, the privacy demands of the application. Uh, with that, now the radio access network becomes a key element in the entire network infrastructure for the operators to deploy and uh, uh, take advantage of that compute at, at the edge. The edge, has the same type of requirements, of flexibility, scalability, uh, agility that the rest of the network have. The requirements that drove the transformation of the network starting at the core in the first uh, in the first uh, place. Um, so all these together, you, you take open RAN initiative, which is precisely driving the same concept: hardware and software disaggregation. Um, open standards, open interfaces, um, general purpose compute platform. And, uh, and, and the operators are looking at that and say, well, you know, this is, uh, this is gonna bring me benefits uh, that they are embracing that. And those doing that will be able to reap the benefit of edge computing and delivering new services at a lower, uh, at a lower cost. As, as you know, uh, probably uh, as you probably know, Intel has been at the forefront of this uh, transformation, this industry transformation, uh, driving the shift to a general purpose server-based uh, kind of network architecture from the core, but also extending it to the edge and to the access. Uh, it's, a, it's a nature that the new network technologies like the 5G RAN or Open RAN and the 5G SA core and the new architectures that are based on SDN based programmable transport. And the fact that all of these solutions are being built to run on software based and cloud native architectures actually give us a really good opportunity to look at edge cloud differently in the sense that can we have a common architecture that supports both applications meant to run on the edge, for example, consumer applications like gaming, uh, industrial applications like Industry 4.0, uh, augmented reality applications, and in the same architecture, can we also run the ORAN, the 5G SA core, the SDN-based programmable transport? The answer is most probably it is yes. The reason is that the cloud native architectures are quite a proven architecture for the application ecosystem. It is still being proven for the ORAN and the 5G core network uh, elements, but it's not far away. Uh, the fact that these kind of architectures brings in a lot of efficiencies and agility to the network deployment, and the, there could be a common model of operations and management for both application developers as well as for network vendors to bring these up, bring their equipment to the uh, to the telco edge cloud makes a hell lot of a sense economically because of the simple reason that the operator can have a common architecture to support both internal as well as external uh, uh, external applications the second important thing is that uh, the the standardization of the runtime for example the hardware and the software 
the fact that uh, cloud native has made it possible already, it means that the IT infrastructure can actually be scaled up to, uh, to modernize it, or I would say to transform it towards carrier grade clouds. And that would mean that we could take the edge as a smaller version of the central offices, it could also be the mobile network nodes, it could also be an application uh, host, it can also run on, a, on the customer premises, and, and that's the growth impetus that, uh, that the operator needed uh, in, in, in 5G. So they basically have to consume 5G and make money out of it, and these new architectures would actually enable that. So I think as the other speakers have, have talked about, I think one of the things around 5G is the use of enterprise and cloud type technologies and architectures and what that allows is a more, more of an opening um, of the architecture. And so what we're seeing uh, is an architectural convergence between edge and cloud and 5G. Now, what that comes with historically is virtualization, disaggregation, you know, all the cool things that we see on cloud architectures. Now, ORAN is yet one more of that. So I think historically, those of us in the telco space have looked at the SDN movement, software-defined networking, NFV, network functions, virtualization. That's been a journey to basically disaggregate and virtualize all aspects of the telco network. The RAN, the radio access network, is I think one of the last bastions of that. And so ORAN or Open RAN is that disaggregation and virtualization of that same thing. The same way we did SDN and NFV along the way for all the other parts of telco infrastructure, you know, ORAN is the continued um, expansion of that cloud type virtualized um, elements that, that does that. And Edge, my view is that that's the platform that makes it all possible. Right? Edge is distributed computing at all locations that powers effectively the new next-gen telco network. And Saad, uh, the correlation between ORAN, Edge, and cloud from your perspective? Yeah, uh, what we believe, you see, uh, as telecom operators, we have started this journey, I think, now almost a decade, and uh, we have learned uh, some good and some not very good experiences, real challenges during the NFV commercialization. And uh, we see over time that the cloud model uh, has changed from the center cloud to the regional and now to the content or the edge distribution. So naturally, we think edge as the natural extension of the cloud. And we really need to harmonize and uh, make use of all our investments as well as the most important the experiences, right? Because we have seen uh, uh, the era from where people called NFV as a jinx to some area where we now see a real commercialization of the technology, right? Um, if we see the pure vision of the edge itself, I think it's very important to see that uh, uh, for the edge application itself, considering the neutral view of a developer or the third party, how they are hosting today, right? Uh, maybe on public cloud, on the cloud itself. So, so obviously from the uh, attraction of the developer or the community, it's, it's, it's vital that uh, it's developed on the cloud native principles and harmonized with the cloud or the, the, uh, the vision of the cloud itself, right? When we see about ORAN, I think um, theoretically ORAN is a uh, different driver, which is uh, a total and disaggregation. But we all know the most important, as we are stretching the uh, over cloud to the last mile to the 5G side, the most important thing is to have an efficiency on the RAN itself. Because really the cost of the RAN boxes are not too much uh, as of today. So how to achieve this uh, uh, RAN automation or intelligence? That is something obviously that requires to follow the cloud principles. I, I give you uh, one example, right? Uh, for example, the latest uh, drive to the rake, right? And the orchestration. This all uh, is actually aligned with the cloud region and uh, uh, the further optimization where we want to use the use cases like the AI and the machine learning, right? That is actually based on the uh, uh, open telemetry and the open data platforms that we can only see from the cloud. So uh, in the nutshell, how we see that, they, uh, we all know this digital transformation, there are many streams, right? And uh, um, I think around a decade ago, many operators, they drive many journeys in parallel, like there is a region on the, uh, let's say the cost or the hardware itself and the cloud and orchestration and the NAS. And it has to converge at least on the edge, 
primarily the brownfield because we see the most important thing for technology commercialization is to find a common deployment model you know because we cannot touch the uh, and uh, or the ad sites uh, different time for different technology so the harmonization and the agree on the commercial deployment model i think that is where i think edge for an and the cloud totally uh, harmonizes and uh, deliver value well, Carlos, I wanted to ask you, what are the real the telco challenges in addressing the edge opportunity, maybe from a technical, organizational, and, and some of the commercial challenges? Well, that's uh, another great point, Dave. Um, well, all the issues that you have mentioned uh, are actually challenges for telcos. So the first one, technical, uh, because network experts need to embrace the cloud philosophy and practices to manage the new technologies. And that is not a straightforward. Second, organizational because network and IT areas have been traditionally independent and now are becoming deeply coupled, with network teams becoming new customers of the IT departments. For instance, the radio team requesting a cloud environment for their distributed units and centralized units, and the IT experts becoming the new architects of our networks. Third, the commercial aspect, because new services can be launched faster and um, will have shorter and more dynamic uh, life cycles moving from a few generalist services for millions of customers as of today to multiple vertical specific ones addressing thousands of customers each. Uh, that means uh, different ways of marketing and selling, uh, specialized sales force and new channels as well, including a great deal of self-serve and platform-oriented approach. And finally, uh, the management and orchestration of multiple clouds from on-premise to the edge cloud, to the public cloud, is an issue that still uh, is not totally solved uh, today, but is becoming more relevant when new cloud flavors, like the different types of edge clouds, are added to the multi-cloud environment. This is both uh, a challenge, but also an opportunity for service providers, like Telefonica, that can help their customers in navigating through this complex portfolio of options and support them in designing and supplying the most optimal combination. Well, that's my view, and I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Absolutely. Shamik, I'm going to get to you about the objectives and goals for the Telco Edge Cloud, but before I do that, Roy, I wanted to ask you about what are the potential, or who are the potential collaborators in the Telco Edge Cloud ecosystem right now? So I think as we've heard from, you know, Saad, Christina, Juan Carlos, is that there's this convergence. And when you open up the technologies on the mobile enterprise side, you open up the ecosystem as well. And so more players can come in. What we're seeing on our side, if you look at the network edge, right, the telco network edge, you have the telco, certainly. You also have the hyperscale cloud providers that are coming in, as well as co-location providers, right? The Equinixes and digital realties of the world. They're looking at different ways of collaborating on that side, right? On the radio edge, you have certainly the carriers, the mobile network operators, the MNOs, but you also have the tower companies, some of whom are interested and have designs on finding ways to add compute or capabilities to those locations, right, at the cell towers. Um, and then moving on to the enterprise edge. Now that ecosystem is a lot more uh, dynamic, right? You have the telcos coming in because historically they've had some kind of customer premise equipment or CPE there. You also have the hyperscale clouds, right? Whether it's uh, Google or Azure or whether it's AWS, they all have designs on that place. And some of them even have offerings. Uh, in the enterprise edge already. But beyond those players and the telcos, you also have the tra traditional ICT vendors that are interested in coming in and the software platform vendors. So your HPEs, your IBM, your Red Hat, your VMware, they all have an interest in that space. And certainly uh, for the system integrators, they look at that as a great opportunity. But it comes down to you know who owns the customer relationship, what unique values do they bring, right? Who owns the real estate, who actually has expertise and economies of scale to leverage and benefit from all of that. And that's still in the process of being worked out as we, as we see. But a lot of partnerships today, uh, you see telcos, hyperscalers, uh, software vendors, um, ICT vendors, the announcements are all over the place. And I think it remains to be, to be seen how it's gonna play out. Uh, Shamik, uh, to you, what should be really the objectives and the goals for a cooperation towards a global telco edge cloud? Right. So, uh, in, in the many of uh, the many operators today, whether they are global service providers or, for that matter, uh, even enterprises, 
uh, will demand a global footprint. When, when, when we say global footprint, it means that they would tap the application developer ecosystem today. And the application developer ecosystem is currently with the public clouds, it's, it's a fact. And that public cloud uh, interfaces or that public cloud ecosystem would have to be brought in some way to the operators. So there is a need to have a single interface to deploy and manage uh, workloads. And as I said in my earlier, uh, earlier part of the, of the discussion, that uh, the workloads could be network functions, workload could be applications. They are all going to be cloud native, most likely, and they have to be managed across multiple geographies. So you cannot possibly expect an application developer to make 10, 20 different versions of the same application just because the operators and the enterprises have different ways of managing workloads. Uh, it's a simply an impossible task for an application developer to maintain that level of you know, uh, diversity in, their, in a single application. So the first thing that the global telco edge cloud should actually try and achieve is to figure out whether they can build this common interface for application developers and then provide a, a larger, larger scale in terms of uh, their reach. Uh, the second important aspect about the global telco edge cloud is that the operators themselves need to have a differentiator. For them, the Telco Edge Cloud is a beachfront property because of the fact that it is very close to the user, the end user. So the operators will have to figure out what are their differentiators, which a developer can consume, which the developer cannot consume otherwise. They can only consume it within the operator network. And one of the critical uh, use case for that is the network exposure functions uh, that 3GPP has been standardizing and edge compute will actually enable that uh, consumption model with the application developers. Those could be specific uh, use cases like location use, location, the quality of service, bandwidth, mobility aspects of which uh, the operators are perhaps best in, best in, 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 in terms of position to provide that interface or that requirements to the developers, uh, notifications, uh, quality of service degradations, it could be done much easier in a much faster way if the operator does that. Uh, roaming is another very important domain. I mean, when uh, edge computing use cases, particularly on the consumer segment will become uh, normal and everybody's playing this uh, a game or using an edge compute service and then uh, people start traveling from one location to another, they would expect the same level of uh, application enablement across operators. So roaming and how that uh, how roaming actually impacts the operator architecture is also very, very important. This is also important for connected cars. For example, if they move from one geography to another, then the ability for the application to migrate from one operator to another is also critical and only operators can do that if they come together and build this global telco edge cloud. So there is no doubt that operators will reach that global footprint with agreements in, or in some form to ensure the uniform service and facilitate the federation of their edge requirements. The combined work of the GSMA and operator platform group, as well as the technical reference framework that we are building as part of the operator platform group and the business requirements that the Telco Edge Cloud Group in GSMA are building, together we would be able to provide the commercial, business, and organizational models to make that happen. This is perhaps is required because otherwise I don't see how uh, a global Telco Edge Cloud can really succeed if the operators don't start to collaborate within themselves. Uh, if, if, if I may add, uh, Carlos, I would like to add uh, just an observation to some uh, comments. So there is also a, a strong demand for this uh, collaboration between operators from the multinational customers, from the B2B segment. No? Uh, we are uh, serving them, um, uh, I would say, pretty well in our local markets, but they are requesting also uh, to have a um, bridge beyond our footprint, so beyond, beyond our networks. And, and this will require a collaboration with other operators to provide solutions like uh, those that we are delivering now for private networks uh, and uh, smart manufacturing and other uh, sectors uh, that where usually our customers are not uh, operating in a single market, but they are probably having operations uh, uh, worldwide. Yeah, and that's an important point to consider. 
Thanks, Juan Carlos. Christine, I want to get back to you. Uh, so where does the network differentiation reside for operators in the Telco Edge cloud, and what real business or technology initiatives does this serve, uh, Christina? No, very good question, right? Uh, this is a new area, right? And, and uh, we are going to learn a lot in the next uh, few months and, and, and the next year. And we have to take all those learnings and, and we have uh, to, uh, this is an industry effort, right? So we, we have to take those learning and be agile in applying all that uh, shared knowledge. I think uh, for uh, this, uh, we actually want to play differently. I, I think uh, first uh, view is very simple, right? Because over key differentiation, right? It is somehow defined by the physical containment of what uh, the telecom operators are owning. And uh, obviously we, we see the over distribution network on the LAN, on the 5G, on the sites itself, right? Uh, this is where already the telecom operator is there, right? So it's, it's definitely one of the things that uh, uh, users are already using and, and building anything additional that leverage on this, it means that we can really break, break things, right? But uh, comparing to the other players in the edge, because if we see the overall situation, the public cloud, they are already offering the edge solution, right? In uh, almost three, four years, right? So. We really need to see that, uh, uh, for example, in our region, there are some other variables, which I think is very vital to offer a carrier grade edge service. For example, we see the identity. For example, you see the uh, pu public cloud are ubiquitous, right? But at the end of the day, when it comes in terms of ownership or contractual uh, things, right? They, they somehow are not, uh, managing in, in a way maybe uh, by the geographical boundaries or by the other constraints. Security and data governance is again one of the things there. I think uh, if our edge solution, we uh, define it, uh, this is definitely one of the things. Then uh, quality, I think that's very, very important. I, I do agree that today uh, the telecom operators, they have not gained some good success on the edge orchestration. Even before this app, edge applications, you know, when we talk about a distributed cloud, this issue is still not well addressed. And uh, uh, we uh, think that uh, in the coming uh, uh, year, there needs to be a special effort to see how we can manage a, let's say, a massive scalable uh, edge network, how to orchestrate it, how to manage it, right? In a pure um, cloud companies, you know, using their advanced Kubernetes or cluster management, they are doing it, but it's not carrier grade, right? So this is again the quality. It comes to uh, SLAs because over customer, I think if we need to see differentiation, we must think about the SLAs. For example, even in the OPG and the CMA initiatives, we have been especially emphasizing to define and list down those list of the metrics which we know that only telecom operators can provide. One of the main reason is, it's not just connectivity, it's end-to-end -end orchestration, because you just see the overall picture of, of this, right? We have uh, uh, the edge, then we have some central cloud and orchestration, and uh, uh, maybe the underlay network, uh, the MPLS, the internet. So to make this end-to-end -end offer, I think this is where we need to really play. But this part is about the physical containment, as I said. I think the other part is, is a wide open question, right? This is where we really want to play differently uh, compared to our 3G, 4G uh, timeline, right? For example, how we can really become the enabler of this service. Uh, Juan is actually with us, and I actually read, uh, even raised this uh, within the community as well, that we need to touch the, not just the IES and PASS, but the SaaS part, because you see the, Right now, our enterprise customer, their requirement is how we can bundle and give them end-to-end -end, uh, thing. And even they expect, you know, we have a good offering for the developer themselves. For example, what they require is a is a complete solution with the developer SDK, the testing um, uh, uh, tool set, and the others. And the most important thing, you see, currently Edge has a lot of constraints, right? Edge site has a security constraints, it has a network connectivity, it has delay issue, it has a lot of other things. I think to really play a part in this, it's very important that as telecom operators, we play in the software value chain because many of the issues, traditionally the cloud or the 
I need the traditional IAS to pass can or solve it. But you see, if we build a uh, and applications or, uh, and solve some of the issues through cloud native itself, for example, to the declarative APIs and the open telemetry and uh, so, so, so I think th th that's an important, and especially I think as we scale, and even when we find a, a wholesale model where the services are moving, it's very important to uh, play on, uh, I, I should say, uh, upper layer on the open API and SaaS. I think this is where I think we can really uh, make a differentiation, especially when we talk in terms of public cloud, because I, I, I must admit, they're too good on this. And this is where we really want to emphasize. We are trying to bring them in, uh, in this journey. And uh, I think this is here, uh, the focus must be, because otherwise just focusing on the physical containment, uh, I think when we go to enterprise and private uh, edge, that uh, differentiation is not going to uh, create a, a long-term value. So, so mm -hmm. that's our key finding or direction. Yes, the telco edge cloud is quite deeply integrated in the network, right? It's it's well inside the operator network. And uh, they, as I mentioned earlier, they need to, the operator need to share the space with the network functions and that give access to the, you know, the different access networks and the core data planes and then provide secure connectivity between the customers who are say enterprises on their premise edge data center to a network edge residing in the operator network. And, and apart from that, as I mentioned earlier, the network as a service model, which the operator will need to define in terms of what kind of APIs they can provide to the developer, to the enterprises, to leverage the, the network differentiation is extremely important. This could be, you know, this could be a tariff uh, or a new revenue generator model for operators. It could also mean that the application developers would demand these kind of services where they get some kind of enriched data on uh, on a predict on uh, and predictability on network. Say, for example, if I'm an application developer, and I would get to know that the network might fail at a certain point, and I need to move my uh, workload to somewhere else, that would be great. Uh, but will that really happen today? Uh, most probably not. But the operators can do that by providing additional capabilities through the network as a service APIs. Similarly, bandwidth uh, uh, location. There could be other uh, uh, network data analytics which uh, the, the developers can uh, consume. So eventually, for the operators, the Telco Edge Cloud is not just a technology initiative, it's a business initiative, because they would end up monetizing these APIs and capabilities which they can't do today because of the over-the-top model. Uh, Roy, uh, business, business or technology initiatives that the Telco Edge Cloud serves? Yeah, so I think, as, as Shamik indicated, right, they, they own that beachfront property, that last mile, that, that last kilometer, and, and they control that. So I think, you know, from that perspective, certainly they can own a quality of experience. They have a trusted relationship. It is a secure uh, network, and so the telco can, can bring that to the table. Um, and I think, you know, from a network differentiation standpoint, I think it comes down to how do you leverage the network? How do you monetize the network? How do you make it available for the enterprises to consume in a way that makes sense, right? That aligns with their application and business goals. And so I think the differentiation there is not just the quality of the network and the real estate and the proximity that they have to the enterprises, but also their ability to expose that differentiation by APIs to the potential partners, right? The hyperscale cloud providers and to the enterprises, either directly or indirectly. And what, in the end, it provides enterprises is a more um, dynamic network, one that's capable of blending better with the applications. For instance, if you're doing unified communications, maybe you want low latency. If you're trying to do bulk transfer in the night, you know you can pay a cheaper price for more bandwidth, right? So there's all these opportunities that are available um, for the enterprises, and I think the the telcos uh, do have a, a role to play in that ecosystem. Juan Carlos, I uh, want to get to some, maybe some near-term or long-term use cases for the Telco Edge. Can you give us an overview and also talk about the importance of the connectivity side of that as well on the Telco side? Okay. Well, um, the Telco Edge Cloud um, is uh, deeply integrated with the network. No? Uh, it is residing on, on, on the edge of the network. 
uh, and it is um, uh, because of this providing direct access to the access networks and the, and the core data planes. And this means it may offer a secure connectivity for the customer between their premises and the edge data center. And this is, uh, this is something extremely relevant, not just for the performance and reliability of the connection, but also for the security, because the, the communication is never leaving the network and is going, not going through the public internet. So this brings an extra probably of, of uh, reliability and, and security to the, to the network. But coming, coming to, the, to the use cases, uh, of course, one, one of the ones that are uh, at this moment uh, relevant is, is the application for private, private cellular network. Yeah? And very recently, we, are, we announced uh, uh, one of our, uh, our agreements in Spain with a, a manufacturing company, Gestamp, uh, that is uh, building parts for the automotive industry, uh, where we were providing the 5G connectivity, and also all the um, edge computing that they require for the digital twin application. Okay, what they what they have been doing is just replicating the physical factory in a digital twin that they use to uh, design, uh, refine, monitor, and optimize the processes inside the factory. All this represents a strong, uh, uh, big amount of information going from sensors, cameras, and different uh, uh, devices in the factory, going uh, through the edge to create this uh, digital twin, this replication in the virtual world of the physical world. And this uh, represents a lot of, uh, of information that needs to go through the network very quickly and reliable, uh, reliably on, on real time with very low latency, and then massive amount of uh, data storage and processing uh, in, in, in the cloud, very close to the, to the customer. No? Um, this is uh, one of the applications. There are many others. So we have uh, uh, operations that are assisted by augmented reality, virtual reality. We have remote control of robots and machinery, end-to-end -end tracking of assets, full sensing and monitoring of processes. So it's a full uh, range of different uh, applications that can be provided from the edge to uh, optimize and, and digitalize the, the processes in the, in the, in the, in the, in the factory. No? Uh, there are other cases like video surveillance, et cetera, but uh, in general, the Telco Edge uh, is going to help uh, our business customer to further offload the customer premises, eliminating the complexity of devices like gateways, sensors, cameras, or communication CPEs, and the need for on-premise uh, servers. And this is very relevant for, for companies that want to digitalize their uh, processes and, uh, and optimize their production, uh, uh, their production uh, and operations. No? Uh, private network will be thus a, a really great field uh, for first experiences on industrial edge uh, use cases, uh, while the telco edge and the network slicing are made available. Okay? Uh, that will be the, probably the next steps uh, towards the, the, our offer to, to business customers. No? Network slicing as a, as a complement to edge computing to build not just computing capacity, but also a full uh, virtualized uh, network uh, uh, for the customer, specialized for, uh, for the customer. You heard Juan Carlos uh, give a lot of examples already. So I'll just emphasize a couple and, and add a few more. So on the telco edge, certainly there's all these uh, cool use cases, um, you know, industry 4.0, either on premises or the telco edge, because perhaps, you know, you don't want your data center running in a factory where it's hard to maintain, maybe dirty or precision agriculture, where, you know, perhaps in, at farms or in certain locations, you don't want a rack of servers, you know, sitting out there, you know, next to, you know, next to your cattle, right? And so, so, so you can provide edge capabilities in those telco edge locations uh, for certainly use cases along those lines, as, as we've covered some of those. But beyond that, there are cool uh, capabilities like for media entertainment, right? Obviously, we've talked about cloud gaming, uh, but there's also things like uh, the ability to do remote production. So you could have camera crews running around and everything's running at the edge. You don't have to have those big TV trucks anymore, which you may be familiar with, but you, you could do that all remotely over the telco edge. And then on the enterprise edge, a lot of use cases around industry 4.0, around healthcare, um, uh, as well as other uh, security, uh, video surveillance related uh, uh, use cases. We're seeing a bunch of those um, across the board. and. Beyond enterprises, smart cities, governments, emergency response, those are all the use cases that we're seeing that are either leveraging the, the telco or cloud edge as well as the enterprise edge. How will these uh, use cases that uh, Juan Carlos mentioned 
How will they transition to an expected operational uh, transformation, if you will, for the Telco Edge Cloud? Right, for the, for the Telco Edge Cloud, uh, in, in principle, uh, this is an operational transformation. Uh, and if, if you look at it in, in multiple ways, we'll see why. First of all, the same Telco Edge Cloud architectures are going to support applications which the operators haven't hosted before. It's a third party applications. The, the cloud companies does that on a regular basis. The developers work with them the operators will now be running these workloads on their on their network. So that's, that's, that means they will have to transform the way they onboard application developers, the tool chains they provide, the CI CD pipelines they provide, the developer developer environment they provide, the sandboxes they would provide. So it's it's an opera, it's definitely an op, it's a transformation in terms of architecture. Now whether this is a, going to be a transformation for the network itself, yes. So the reason is that, that there would be many telco edge clouds, right? I mean, there cannot be just a few data centers anymore. There would be hundreds, possibly thousands for an operator. So the, the scale of the telco edge cloud would be massive, even for a single operator. So for them to manage such large scale distributed cloud with so many application developers working on them, their own network functions like Open RAN, programmable SDN, 5G core, all running on them, it would mean a massive transformation for operators in terms of how they manage this, manage all of this. Also the fact that 5G and Open RAN would introduce multi-vendor ecosystems. That would, that would mean that there will be multiple vendors in, on the network alone. So the operators most likely will have to invest in, uh, in automation systems, possibly driven by artificial intelligence, because it might be nearly impossible to maintain the network provide predictability in the network, maintain carrier grade standards, maintain uh, a developer confidence uh, without being able to do things in a more predictable manner. And for that, I think the artificial intelligence based operational transformation would become mainstream and the operators will have to invest in it. I wanted to thank everyone for their time. Juan Carlos, as always, uh, you always give us your time. We really appreciate that. Saad, uh, it's the first time we, we, we're thank doing you. this. and. I appreciate your answers, uh, Roy. Sorry, we didn't get to as much as we'd like to. Uh, you were actually going, you were going in and out a little bit as well, and I know it wasn't on your side; it's on ours. Uh, Shamik, uh, Shamik and Altran actually made all of this possible, so I wanted to recognize that. Uh, we wouldn't be having this session now if it wasn't for him. So, Shamik, I'll I'll catch up with you later on today as well, and Navnita as well, and then uh, Christina, of course, uh, we'll connect real soon, and we'll get you all set up. Okay. Thank you. That's all right, great. thanks, thank guys. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To all of our viewers out there, uh, thank you again uh, to our speakers on this executive broadcast called the Telco Edge Cloud for this broadcast on demand and all of our executive sessions. Please log on to the networkmediagroup.com. So long.